and welcome back to Tech Ninjistics. Today I want to give an intro um, to a very cool topic and I'm, I'm going to try to fly through this but it, it's sometimes misunderstood and I feel like uh, in the very beginning of iCloud Apple didn't do a great job of explaining this so I'll give it a try. Uh, here's an intro to iCloud. iCloud is Apple's new cloud-based storage and syncing service. It's very very useful if you uh, take a little time to learn what they're actually trying to accomplish. Uh, iCloud syncs data and uh, documents between your iDevices. When I say iDevices, I mean uh, iPhones, iPads, and iPods, or iPod Touches, uh, Macs, and even PCs. There's some syncing with PCs, uh, a little more limited, but you can do some stuff there. Uh, backs up and restores iPhones, iPads, and iPod Touches. So uh, we'll touch on that a little bit more later. And it also provides a, a web or a cloud-based access uh, to your documents and your, your data online uh, from any, any web browser, which is nice. Uh, so the first part of that, uh, syncing data and documents, uh, you get with iCloud, if you choose uh, uh, your name at me.com email, it's optional, but uh, you can have email and it can sync that for you. Uh, Calendars and contacts, also very useful, especially for iPhone users. Uh, all your contacts that you store, phone numbers, uh, can sync, calendar appointments can sync between different Apple devices, your Apple uh, Mac computer, your iPad, your iPhone. Uh, you can sync your notes, your reminders. This is really handy. I use both of these a lot. Uh, documents, uh, the photo stream even, so you can take pictures on your iPhone, have them sync to your computer or to your iPad. Uh, over the air, over Wi-Fi, very useful. And even the settings of your iDevices. Uh, you can do backups. Uh, when moving to a new iPhone or a new iPad uh, from an older model, so for example you had an iPad 2 and you go out and buy the new iPad, you can uh, over Wi-Fi connect the new iPad and, and literally restore it from an iCloud backup and it will then the new iPad will look and feel and be configured exactly like the old one was configured which is a really handy feature um, I've used that a lot and it just it so much simplifies the setup of your new Apple device uh, also uh, web-based access so iCloud.com uh, this is for your convenience uh, you can find your iPhone if you lose it via the web quick demo let's go to Safari and here's iCloud.com. Uh, you can sign in uh, for your first time. You can set up your login right there. Uh, zoom in a little bit. So sign in, set up. Uh, also, you can learn more. And learn more will take you to a, a pretty handy uh, article they have here. Here it is. Um, and it goes through some of the same stuff that uh, we're talking about today. Okay, back to our slide deck. Good news, it's free. Uh, your first five gigs of data is free. Uh, for the non-technical users, that's a good bit of data. Uh, most people won't need all that data uh, with a couple uh, Apple devices. Uh, but if, if you get to that point, you can pay to upgrade. Uh, not everything gets backed up in the iCloud. So, for example, music and movies, uh, those are larger files. They don't get backed up, but we have other ways to back those up uh, and even back them up wirelessly, so that's not a big deal. Uh, how to use iCloud. can be a bit confusing, like I mentioned. Uh, really helpful once you know how to use it, and it can change the way you work. Uh, first of all, the login. Uh, and this is where some people get kind of stuck. Your iCloud login is created by using an Apple ID. Uh, Apple ID is your uh, identification that you set up with Apple. Now the Apple ID is based on whatever email address you choose to give Apple. It could be a it could be a dot uh, or a me dot com address, an, an Apple uh, email address. It could be a Hotmail address, a Yahoo address, a Gmail address. That email address becomes your Apple ID. So that's where some of the confusion is. Um, it can be the same Apple ID that you use to buy things in iTunes, uh, for example, in music or movies or, or buy apps in the Mac App Store, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, there's a separate sign-in process to turn an Apple ID into an iCloud account. So that's a, an extra step, but 
a lot of people won't ever have to go through that step because that'll be done when they're in the Apple Store for them or it'll be done the first time you set up your iDevice. So you'll have created an Apple ID in the past to buy things, for example, or to register your Apple device in store, and you will automatically get an iCloud ID. Uh, but that's not necessarily the case. So it's kind of a, an interesting distinction that you have to make between the two. The iCloud paradigm. Uh, one iCloud lo login generally works best with one individual. This was not the case with the Apple ID. With the Apple ID, uh, what families did would have, uh, they would have one Apple ID and, and that ID would be used to purchase all the music, all the movies, so then everybody could share. Uh, with the iCloud login, it's best to have one per individual because, for example, if you have a couple iPhones in the house, uh, if you're using the same iCloud login to both of those iPhones, generally, uh, you basically your contacts will be synced uh, between the iPhones. So if that's what you want, that can work. But if you want to have different sets of contacts, the easiest way to do it is with two different iCloud logins. Um, so, and I put that second bullet there. Uh, you don't want to mix up your calendars, contacts, notes, and other items a lot of times. You want to kind of have separate sets of those data. So what you can do is you can have one Apple ID that the whole family uses, uh, your primary Apple ID, to buy music and uh, movies and other items, and, and, and even uh, iTunes Match. We'll touch on that in a different video, but it's another uh, Apple service uh, for mu music. Um, and then each person who has an iDevice can have their own Apple ID, which gets turned into an iCloud account. So everybody can have their own set of uh, contacts and their own set of calendar data and their, their own uh, potentially an email address associated uh, with the iCloud account. That's it for that. One quick demo. Uh, let me pull up the iPhone here, one moment, and here it is. So here's the iPhone, and I'm showing you the home screen here. I'm going to click on Settings, and then I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and here's your iCloud icon. So I'm going to click on that, and uh, this is basically showing you your iCloud login name, and then here are some of the things I mentioned that you can choose to sync or not to sync over iCloud. So I choose to sync... Um, my iCloud uh, email address, which is a me.com address. I choose to sync contacts, very useful. So uh, rather than your address book, your contacts just being stored on your iPhone, they can get backed up in the cloud. So even if your phone gets lost or destroyed, they'll still be there. Uh, calendars, reminders, also very handy. Uh, in the next version of OS 10, there will be a feature where you can sync your reminders to um, your OS 10 Mac, which is really convenient. Um, even Safari bookmarks, notes, uh, photo stream, like I said, so you can sync photos between um, your iPads, iPhones, uh, iPod Touches, uh, documents and, and data. So various apps are now supporting iCloud synchronization. Uh, you can turn on Find My iPhone, like I said, so if you lose your iPhone, you can log in to iCloud.com or log in from another uh, iDevice and track your iPhone in real time. Uh, and then you can view uh, what sort of storage and um, uh, backup resources uh, you're using and, and how close to that 5 gig limit you are. Anyhow, uh, hopefully we'll explore iCloud in some more detail in uh, subsequent videos, but I wanted to give you a brief overview. Uh, hopefully that helped helps kind of demystify some of the, the stuff. I encourage you to play around with it and, and really utilize iCloud because it's, it's one of the uh, coolest uh, recent innovations from Apple, a great way to synchronize all your data. So no matter what device you're using, you have access to all these different items.